Dan Rola, I'm Alfredo B. Diaz, a professor at the University of the Philippines, Visayas, a university which I know is close to your heart. I am privileged and happy and blessed to be sharing a conversation with you this morning to celebrate the University of the Philippines and of course your life. Happy birthday, you're now 99 years old. <laughs> Thank you. Kamusta ka na ma'am? How are you? I'm okay. Uh, strong enough to uh, answer your questions <laughs> and human enough to be funny. Wow. <laughs> uh, your, your career as a writer, researcher, uh, teacher, administrator is very colorful and um, vibrant and uh, significant. I'm interested to know how you got into the University of the Philippines. I was offered the principalship of a private school where I was doing my practice teaching, uh, which was interrupted during the war. Mm -hmm. Now, the person who was uh, interviewing me and offering me the job eventually became the, uh, uh, the UP president mm -hmm. and the dean of the College of Law, yeah. Dr. Cinco, Vicente Cinco. Then, before, I, I didn't know all of this happening behind me. And one day, President Gonzalez called me to his office to say, how are you, and so on and, and so forth. And I was amazed that a president would call a faculty member just for a chat, he said. So he said, how, how do you know what's happening in Asia? Because at that time, you know, uh, there were rumblings that there might be an Asian war. Mm -hmm. So I said, uh, I don't know the politics of it, but I think, I said, it would be good for a, a budding historian. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's now, I am no historian, but history is a record of significant events. So I would be interested in it. So all of a he said, I'm going to send you to Australia. Ah, I was not happy because all of us wanted to come to the States, you know. But what could I do? So I pinched myself underneath and I said, be proper, <laughs> you know. So I said, it's up to, well, Mr. President, it is really up to the board of which you are the head, I said. But I also know that literature is a history, an imaginative history. And I, it would be good to pioneer in such matters. That's all. That is how I became what I am. Okay. So you joined the faculty of uh, the, the, the Department of uh, English at the University of the Philippines, am I correct? Yeah, that, yeah. That, that was my first yeah. job after the war. Because when the war broke out, uh, I was a senior, second semester, mm -hmm. and all of us were asked to go home, with the exception of those in nursing, mm -hmm. and I think dentistry, oh, to go home. So all of us uh, who were members of uh, our family uh, took Kalesa to Paku Station. And wow, the crowd was awful, you know. Yeah, you could see uh, passengers climbing up the windows of the uh, train that was going to take up to uh, to Bicol because the railroad station ended up in Bicol. So I asked somebody, you push my buttocks, I will also climb. <laughs> and I, I did what others were doing. Mm -hmm. I climbed and I, and, I mean, fortunately, I climbed into four empty seats. <laughs> Lucky. So I uh, pushed my way to the window and I said, come on here, there are three more. And they did what they, uh, they did. We all landed and went down the sailboat 
That is how I became a sailor. So how was it like to be a faculty of the English department of the UP in the 1950s and the 1960s? Yeah. How was it like? Oh, oh, ni 19... Uh, when was that? You, uh, uh, after the war? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, before the war, I was a senior. Mm -hmm, a senior already. Yeah. And, and then when the war uh, came, we were all sent home. We did what most of us thought they could do well, which was teach. So I organized classes, I mean, uh, classes amongst the um, barrio folks. You also became department chair of uh, the English department. A department chair? Yeah, yes. Yes. It, it was never my, my ambition Bishop. ever to become an administrator. Mm -hmm. But yes, the I was, what I wanted was to become a good teacher. At the time, honors were given to the best teachers in the country. Like Metro Bank today. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, so that was my aim, was to be the best. So when you were doing your MA in uh, Australia in the University of Melbourne and later your PhD in the U.S. University of Chicago, uh, the, the height of the white Australian policy and the segregation of people of color was also... Uh, yeah, yes, speak. yes. How was it like being a female Filipino scholar during these times? Oh, well, we were all doing very well, mm -hmm. you know, the, uh, the son of the ambassador, Regala, who is a famous uh, uh, lawyer now, a member of uh, the Angara group, mm -hmm. yes. And he was interviewed during the necro for him. So we met, he was a student, very devoted, he was very unsociable. Mm -hmm. And I told him about that, and yes, yes, we had to, to be unsociable because uh, uh, the standards were rigorous. So you didn't find it difficult uh, being Filipino and female in America, in Australia? Yeah, yeah. That, that was my, dis my distinction was not wow. to be the best scholar, no. Wow. My distinction was to be a woman, number two, to be a woman who is in graduate school, yeah. After your PhD, you returned to the Philippines? Yeah, because uh, I really wanted to be a teacher. And, and so uh, I was taken in when I arrived. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, you know, uh, the president called for me again. Again, wow, yeah. constant. And he said, uh, there is a steamer uh, full of grantees uh -huh. from different American institutions. Yeah. So, do you want to join, join the crew? And I said, Mr. President, I still have a debt to pay. You know, so I would like to pay that debt. Return service. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, the steamer went. I, was, I said goodbye really to most of my who eventually become my colleagues and uh, who went to the high, greater heights. The history of UP would mention that you were also a dean of UP's Baguio. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, but I went to Baguio not, to, not because I was going to be dean. It, it was not part of my ambition to be an administrator. What I wanted was to see my picture in the papers because media was very partial to education at that time. And uh, so I have uh, the Australian government established with, with other governments then uh, a what is called now the Colombo Plan. Colombo Plan. Yes. And eventually it was uh, renamed uh, the Australian Fellowship. Uh, you're one of the first uh, Filipino scholars to be the sent first. to Australia. 
Yeah. Uh, uh, government. Government. Yeah, yeah. And the son of the ambassador. The ambassador. But he was already studying. Uh -huh. You were also engaged in uh, different ad hoc committees at the university, especially uh, initiating the, for the uh, including the development of, like, for example, UP Clark yeah. and UP San Fernando, okay. uh, which later became Pampanga. Because, because I, was, I am what they call Pacquia La Mera. Pacquia La Mera. <laughs> you know, I, I, I would give uh, unsolicited advice, you know, uh, how to know a community. And, and I did not have courses in that. So what were the, the difficulties or the challenges being part of this ad hoc committee of San Fernando? UP Pampanga, UP Clark, yeah. did you find it difficult? And then, no to me, because you are a pioneer, you could try anything. So it was fun. And, and nobody can say, hindi tama yun. You know? Walang BC comparison. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was uh, sent as uh, chairman also of the UP Mindanao group. Mm. Uh, Emil Javier uh, was not yet president at the time, but he was part of the team. Mm -hmm. So that gave me an opportunity to, to tour for free, you know. That Mindanao. Uh, Mindanao. So I went to Susiri. Uh, leading cities now, like uh, 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 Sambuanga, mm -hmm. you know, Davao. Uh, and I got interested in, in the uh, native culture. That is where my, my interest uh, was bolstered. Because during the war, I decided that it was no longer interesting to to sow palai, uh, to be part of a harvesting group. I learned how to use the, the site and so forth. So there was more than what education, formal education, uh, did for me. I learned as a student, uh, an observer, uh, what rural life was. So when I came back, uh, UP Baguio was uh, being established, and UP Clark was our income plus plus provider because we were paid separately in dollars. Dollars. So, <laughs> yeah. And that, that is my, 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 my first exposure uh, to non-Filipinos. So from UP Diliman, UP Baguio, UP Clark, UP Pampanga, you also did a stint in UP Mindanao. Now my question is, how did you end, in, end up in uh, UP Visayas? Oh, how did I end up in UP Visayas? No one wanted to go to Visayas, <laughs> you know. And, and uh, I am a pioneer at heart mm -hmm. because we, I am Ilocano by uh, uh, what? Pioneering spirit. By Pakia Alamera. Pakia Alamera. So I used to. Oh, my friends were farmers, harvesters, mm -hmm. and so on. So I learned that. I learned how to know uh, how to use a, a scythe. You know? I learned how to, to grow kabote. Yeah, all the, the rural, rural skills, skills. I, I decided that I would master all the rural skills until the time came when I was always the champion, you know, because you have to put the pala here. And there's a style for you to hold a bath full, mm -hmm. you know. You, you don't uh, cut and, and then put somewhere, no? You have you have to have your fist full because we were also paid by the number of this, you know. So my, my ambition at that time was to beat them all. Wow. Yeah, I, I, I became uh, ambitious that way. Okay, you so know, you, was, were, was, you were a master of these uh, rural skills and also a teacher. <laughs> yeah, well, well uh, I think that if I beat them, 
by producing more, mm -hmm. uh, that meant that uh, I must have learned unconsciously certain skills. Because you have to fill your money with, with uh, uh, a share. And you put them down, and soon I, 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 I won over such competition. I was the one who always uh, ripped six instead of five months. So nobody wanted to go to the Visayas, but you volunteered and you went to the Visayas. UP Visayas uh, UP and eventually Visayas. became yeah. our chancellor. No, there, there was no UP Visayas yeah, at that yeah. time. But uh, I taught uh, practice teaching mm -hmm. in a school near uh, the printing press then of President Cinco, who eventually became the president. And I was teaching in his school. That is how he, he came to know me, because he would ask me always to proofread his books. And uh, so I think that he was not pleased that there were a lot of... Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So he called me once, and he said, uh, how do you want uh, to go to graduate school? And I said, I think I would like to run a graduate school. That's it. And then uh, uh, more candidates were, were invited. And, and then President Gonzalez called me and said, uh, I didn't see your name amongst the invitees, but I recommended you because I think uh, majors in, uh, in English and other majors always choose to go to the States. And we have to know first our neighbors. Wow, well, I was so disappointed because I really wanted to go to the States. And uh, I read about uh, Pascual, you know, and I thought I would like to go to the college to the university where Ricardo Pascual, he was what, the most famous Philippine scholar. So let's not talk about, let's now talk about your, uh, your role in UP Visayas. You became our first chancellor and the first uh, female chancellor of the whole UP system. How was it like being chancellor of uh, then very young university, UPV? You, you know, I did not take administration, but maybe because I lived amongst, during the war, that I lived amongst farmers, mm -hmm. rice farmers, and it was getting to be boring. So I, we have a big family, and so I told them, magpalabas tayo. So we, we, we had our own drama group, and we would go from barrio to barrio and make palabas. And it was the only recreation that the farmers had. So, and then I wrote the place, but I don't have, I only have memory of that because there were no typewriters, you know, all, everything was spread by word of mouth. So, uh, UP Visayas, you became our first chancellor and then, uh, there were some issues regarding the, the choice of Miagao as the site of UP Visayas. Because there were other uh, uh, places, candidates for the... No. Yes. Uh, ma many, uh, the capitals of the different provinces were competing to be the site mm -hmm. of a UP Visayas. And I knew that the focus would be fisheries. So I volunteered to join the group. And uh, you could see in the, in the air white flags, mm -hmm. meaning vote for us. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I decided you cannot vote unless you know the place. So I asked to be a member of the search crew. I was the only female mm -hmm. uh, being used to farm work, uh, I learned the psychology also of the farmers. 
So how were how how was uh, UP able to acquire uh, Miyag Awas the site of UP Visayas? Oh, ambition. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hectares, farmers, most of the farmers went to Mindanao mm -hmm. for a better way of life. So there were no hardly any farmers left in Miyagao because uh, they would go to Mindanao on bamboo rafts, no, and then paddle themselves to Mindanao. And then they became prosperous there, so everybody wanted to go. So I thought, uh, I would like to see Mindanao, you know. So I went to, to Mindanao on bamboo craft. What were, what were some of your major challenges as Chancellor of uh, UP Visayas? I, I cannot say major. They were all challenges, you know. Uh, one, uh, becoming, because that was one of the... Becoming. Yeah, that if you choose UP uh, a, a university there, that means uh, you would be interested in rural you know, uh, culture. And I thought, yeah, I know rural culture because uh, that was where we lived during the war. So I volunteered just to go and see. And then when I came back, uh, I said we could also have a UP Mindanao, so to speak in one of the barrios here, in uh, one of the barrios in uh, uh, Visayas. So the president created a UP Visayas study group, and I joined the group. I was the only female, uh, you know, and uh, there were no dormitories wherever we would, because we were supposed to be pioneers. So, where the men slept, that was also where I slept. And uh, the provincial governors were always shocked. No, there's no problem. I said, I am he I'm here not seeking for a husband. I said, I'm here seeking for uh, the approval of a university in the Visayas. So finally, it was Miyagao. Miyagao won over the other... Yes, uh, nominees. Because it it were it, it was the barrio captains who, who, who fought for that. Have you visited Miyagao recently, ma'am? Pardon. Have you visited Miyagao recently? I always do. Mm -hmm. When was yeah. the last time? Uh, the day before yesterday. Wow. Okay. Yeah. What can you say about it now? Uh, it's thriving, and the faculty members because I told them whether you stay here permanently or not, it is a good, uh, a, a good investment a place, you know. So, so we, we that, that's what I did. Yeah. I, uh, there were no savings bank at that time. Mm -hmm. So uh, whenever people needed money, no, uh, I lent them money, but at no interest at all. So, so oh, that's it. So pretty soon, uh, the farmers were always coming to me, you know. And I would lend them. And you know, they were very honest. Wala kasulatan eh, you know. But they remember, yeah. So uh, you mentioned that it was never your intention to be administrator. You just wanted to teach. I'm just uh, interested to know who influenced you to become a teacher? Oh, I wanted to be a teacher, but to become an administrator, no. Uh, how did, maybe I am an accidental <laughs> administrator. You could call it that way. Okay. Yeah, because uh, nobody wanted to lead. Mm -hmm. And SIFDEC at that time was a very popular uh, fisheries uh, institution research institution, and SIFDEC was against 
having a UP in the Visayas because their intention was to, to establish a school. But eventually, you became our first chancellor of UP Visayas. Congratulations. Yeah. And for the record, you're the first female chancellor of the UP system. Yeah. But uh, I never considered this honors. Mm -hmm. uh, they were uh, they work. work, work yeah. yeah. But it was fun uh, because you dealt with rural folk. And I knew how to deal with rural folk. Because during the war, uh, my, my father bought uh, land, mm -hmm. planted it to rice. So I, uh, my, my, my own farm, uh, and he planted tobacco because he came from the Cagayan province. So when, when the abaca plants, they would grow tall because he knew how to. And, and uh, farmers were buying the tobacco leaves from us, and he taught them how to dry and so forth. And that became one of the income-producing uh, uh, farmers' work that gave them more income because he taught them also how to make tobacco, you know, uh, and sold them by the sacks. And in, in our case, we learned how to uh, produce seedlings of tobacco. You know about the size you know, the tobacco leaf. Mm -hmm. And it is not all mid-ribs. It was really all leaf because of my father's practical knowledge. Mm -hmm. And so we were uh, producing uh, tobacco in uh, an area Everybody was always smoking. If you want to learn how to uh, invent and so on, uh, go for it. Because you make adjustments. Eh? You, know, you go to places uh, that do not produce uh, tobacco. <laughs> yeah, there in, the, in Piagao. And then my father, was from Cagayan, knew how to produce tobacco. Uh, if he would be there, you don't see him because the tobacco plants were higher than him. Mm -hmm. So he taught us how, how to dry, how to slice, how to make cigarettes. And that is how I uh, yeah, transferred that skill wherever I went. UP got interested in community development, yeah. And uh, I met that group because they heard about CIFDEC, mm -hmm. which is not Il Ilongo born. CIFDEC uh, was getting to be popular, really, as uh, an expert in, uh, in not, not really production, but they went into it eventually. So the uh, leader of that group uh, volunteered to establish what is now known as CIFDEC, you know. So they, they were the first ones to, to oppose uh, the establishment. Yeah. They thought that were, they were going to have competition. But they needed researchers. So where would they get the researchers? Mm -hmm. You know, some from UP. Uh, yeah, poaching, and then, uh, yeah, and then uh, most of our researchers would leave, you know, and uh, join if they, because the pay was good. The UP, at the time, I mean, the government, at the time, uh, said that. Uh, we have to know about uh, our own land. And uh, at that time, they were still the advisors to Marcos. Yeah. So he said, uh, we don't know about the land. I mean, how to produce rice. Because there were scholars and Paeg was then an advisor to Marcos said, no, 
we have now uh, institutions for the production of, uh, no, of palay because then uh, Iri got interested. So I think she Odi and Noel Soriano, may they rest in peace now, thought uh, if we have expertise on land, we must have expertise on water, yeah, so yeah to complete, you know, uh, the development of the country, because we are exporting the fish, and and then we are producing the rice. Walang ulam yung fish, or walang ulam yung palay. That is how it it started. It, it was not a a, a studied. No, of of uh, uh, well, the ar archipelago, all that they know is that we now know about waters, but we don't know about those who drink and sail the waters. Yun ang logic nun eh. Very simple. You know what happened? Yeah, uh, as if Dick maybe was afraid. That Siftek uh, was getting its funding from the government, yeah, and uh, UP Mindanao was getting so little. We used uh, UP Mindanao as the handle, and then, uh, but no one amongst them were fishers, you know. So there was a a powerful community group in. Uh, in uh, Diliman, you know, who thought, well, we have uh, institutions uh, that that uh, are experts in rice production, etc. So let's now develop experts. You know, one is for the land how to make the land produce. And they had already developed experts, uh, sent experts to, uh, to the states and, and said, let us now develop experts on water. And that is where, uh, at the time, I was a, the dean of the UP Baguio. I, I went around, but at the time, I was uh, dean of UP Baguio, so uh, my my own theory then is that you you go not to change, but to bring the seeds of change. So uh, there was a very favorite, uh, parang ano, native um, uh, practice which was to, parang ano yan eh, before you choose the land, you have all kinds of dances, yung ano, so that stuck in my head. Uh, many were going to the States uh, on, on the Smith Bond scholarship, and I, I thought, uh, it's not only the states that can teach us. No, why don't we we go to another uh, direction? Uh, and that uh, and and we had an ambassador who wanted to do also something different. And so his son, who was taking up law in Australia, uh, thought. Oh, well, before we make decisions, let us see Australia. Mm -hmm. So we were like tourists. We, we were brought to this place which was famous for like this. And that is how we got to know Australia. So I said, why not offer scholarships for Australia? And that is, uh, but it was not in my intention to go to Australia. I still wanted to go 
to the University of Chicago. Yeah, because that was where our philosopher, si Dick Pascual, went. And he, was, he, became, a, he became a very popular faculty member in every section of his, you know, classes were overflowing. There were not enough chairs because there were so many students who wanted to be taught by, you know, uh, by Pascual. So he, he, he did something funny. There were no chairs anymore. Now let us do it. Uh, I will provide the chairs, he said. Nah, you just answer the questions. So he did it his own way. Yeah, like, you are here, aren't you? Yes, sir. There are no chairs, are there? No, sir. You know. Uh, but you can command yourself to do what you should do. Yes, sir. So now you're standing. Are you okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Now think of yourself as chairs. And so they all laughed, no? <laughs> you know. And then we invited him mm -hmm. to UP Visayas. Mm -hmm. Our dilemma is interested in developing itself, of course. Uh, that is to be expected. Then he became one of the... Uh, he became a chancellor at the time, the, after years of development. And he became uh, a faculty member. Now. We invited him. Yeah. So that is how we be, we, I succeeded in, being, in building a bridge to Quezon Hall. So I said, uh, you are interested in fisheries, I, I said, but CIFDEC is here, so you cannot compete with CIFDEC. You know? But I noticed that those in CIFDEC enroll in graduate school. Yeah. And they go to UP Visayas. So I said, uh, uh, my word at the time was, we will, imb one day I said to CIFDEC, because CIFDEC's ambition was to develop itself into a graduate school. I said, uh, that will come about, I said. Uh, how? We already bring up from Mindanao the experts. So I said, we will develop the experts. Uh, we are not going to compete because the more experts we have, the better. But do not uh, overlook what is already within reach. Yeah. So uh, their scientists were enrolled in our graduate school until they became convinced that uh, there's no use having two graduate schools. Mm -hmm. And they are not a teaching institution. Uh, they are a research institution. So then you, you undertake your research, I said. And our faculty will enroll whatever programs. So our faculty were there. So eventually we became friends. <laughs> not competitors. Yeah. I think until now, UP's flagship program is fisheries. And uh, their staff of CIFDEC study at UP. And the uh, faculty of UP also do uh, community service there. So, yeah. oh. so they are at peace with each other. <laughs> Eventually, I thought it was good, a good strategy. Pala. So we expanded our graduate programs and pretty soon you know, we, we established also a, a marine laboratory and, and the son of uh, uh, Campos, the vice president at the time, was a marine uh, scientist. 
So he offered uh, to teach in the uh, in Sifdek, you know. But at the time, Sifdek was getting to be less of Sifdek, yeah, because then he he got married to his girlfriend who was also in Marid Zayad. So we offered the basement of uh, UPV and asked them to develop that into a buried lab, na sub, subterrestrial yun, ha? Oo. And any researchers uh, expressed their desire to work with them. It's, it's really a parallel, unintended uh, research group, oh, because Benny enrolled to work with them. But meanwhile, their work was getting to be world famous. So we were getting uh, offers already to teach and expand the Barid Lab. Those are pioneers. They're still there, husband and wife. Uh, much to the disappointment of <laughs> Pepin Campos. <laughs> uh -oh. yeah. And, 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 and Pipi Campos at that time was not my friend. You know, my mga ambitions na, I, it was never my ambition to be an administrator. Oh, oh. oh, oh. But if it was first, uh, what asked of me, so I said, that's a challenge. I want to be the best administrator. Yeah. And, and uh, Dodol Nemenso was uh, there also. But Dodol's uh, research interests are not in marine or, or fisheries. Oh, I was really very fortunate. Like, Sisigo was not yet uh, a law professor. He was simply a writer of books. And he learned that I was the one teaching English. So he was sent me you know, uh, the first batch, and asked me to, uh, uh, yeah, to read without pay. Uh, I love it because it was providing me experience, and I was getting to know him. So when I returned, he was already, he was dead when I returned, the president of the UP. Yeah. So when he remembered me, when I paid by courtesy call. A very simple life naman yung akin. But my, they asked, what is your philosophy? What is your Nagging question. My philosophy is just uh, to do well when I am assigned to do something. You did very That's well. That's it. And then I started uh, uh, maybe that that, not the, just in my mind, that for you, if you really want to be an administrator, you know, the first thing that you should be good at is working with people, you know. And who, what people are you working with? The, at the time, uh, there's, there was a lot of uh, student activism. Yeah, in Liba, oh. And so, I joined them <laughs> oh, in relation to the community. Activista mm, you know? ka So, uh, I was made, made because I was chance uh, what did at the time. So, I joined them because I was invited also to, do, uh, to be a member of their women's group. para mutual, you know. And that is where I, I planted the seed of uh, sympathy with activism. Uh, whenever there was trouble in the town, you know, uh, the president of the Alumni Association, at first he was very angry because the activists were from the UP. First of all, were in any rallies, even to Congress, no? would you have uh, deans 
go, di ba? Oh, wala. Wala. Eh, doon, kasaba ako sa rally. Eh, student activist. So, pagdating ko doon, uh, ano, meron daw sa gate. Ito, o ano, hindi ko yung binabasa para hindi ako magagali. So, pero uh, everybody was at work. So, ang sabi ko sa, at sila daw ay pinepressure na huwag lang pumasok. Anong sabi niya? Pinepressure. So, you are not doing this because you want to. Hindi mo, talaga, sincere kayo. Buhatin niyo yung inyong mga silya, sabi ko. And a red shirt facing the oblation. No. Wala. Doon na, wala na. Nakaupo na kayo doon. So, baba yan, dyan, dyan mga estudyante, no? May magbabayad ng fees, walang tatanggap ng fees. Yung mga gano'n. No? Nakita nila, in front of the oblation na sila. No? Wala naman akong sinabi. Afterwards, nag-disperse na sila. O, no? hindi naman ako. No? So, it, it is their own language. And you also have to respect. You, you don't punish them. Kasi, we are talking about free, freedom of thought, freedom of expression. Ayun ang kanilang alam nung araw eh. Yung primero, my first night there, takpo sa akin yung, ano, yung, uh, yung security guard. Mga pero pong nagbuboxing doon sa kanto ng Little Theater. No? Kayo lamang siguro ang... Eh, bakit hindi naman ako marunong magboksing? Eh, pero I went. So, they were really dalawa. I don't even know them. Eventually, they became my friend. Ang ginawa ko, I put my hand on the collar, back collar, at yung isa rin, ginawa ko, and jerk them apart. You know? Oh. Uh, why don't, sabi ko, why don't you use your heads? Why do you use your hands? Yupi ito eh. Sabi ko. Nakita mo ka ako. Takbuhan ng lahat. Oh, hindi na disper. <laughs> I not, that I will not forget. And then I call them to a meeting the next day. No. Anong natutunan ninyo kagabi? No. Diba, so we're not saying. Oh. Do you still hate him? No. Yo. Oh, no. You mean it? So, I am now dismissing you, but before you go, you have to uh, show that you are sincere. Ay nagkabaya na sila. Hindi tapos na boxing. Tinawag ako ni Gonzales. Akala ko, i-recommend niya akong member ng Smith Bowling Group. Napupunta. Nakasakay sa vapor. And then I was there all the... Uh, the Nag-goodbye ako sa kanila. Ah, fulfilling an ambition nila. At ambition ko rin. I was so disappointed that uh, I was the chosen. Chosen. So, okay lang naman. So, back to the boot dogs. <laughs> so, uh, and I learned their culture. I learned how to get their cooperation. You know? Kasi naman, during the war, we became farmers. My family, because my father was a forester, eh, and he knew how to deal with the rural folks. Yeah, that, that's where I learned. I, di I did not take a degree in rural development, I don't know. but uh, I would always help my father type reports, uh -uh, and he would always uh, accompany just to, maybe to be sure that I am protected. Yeah. So, my father was one of my educators. Ah, yeah. correct. Yan pala yun. I knew how to plant tobacco. Whenever he would, you know the tobacco, and you have to remove the worms because nobody would, I'm talking about tobacco itself, not sliced, no? And every day, he would, you would not see him because the tobaccos were 
higher, but removing all the worms because uh, we want to be sure that the tobacco leaf was, uh, was perfect. You learn everything, but don't abuse. Among pagkain namin noon, mga susu, I would start from from the river namin. Ang dami ng mga susu. You harvest the susu. And then you cut the tip. You wash them well. And then when the water is boiling, may ano na yan, whatever you want. Put the susu. And the susu would open. Harvest this is so ang sarap na ulam. Parang ano niya na yung ulam ng hari. Wala ka namang ibang makakain. Tobacco, hindi naman. Hindi makain. I would join, I would join those who would plant the rice so that when they went harvesting, I could join them. You know, you start from the top eh. Kasi mountain rice yun eh. So you don't climb. You go upstream, start from the top, bore a hole, and your partner will drop only so many palai. So I learned how to how to be the one to drop the palai. I became an expert in that. At sa kano? Sabi ko pagpasaya tayo dito sa bundok. So I would write place. Wow, do not theater now. Oh, oh, yeah. I would write plays, and because we have a big family, oh, alam mo na, ako director. And then, uh, magkakasaba ko because I would join planting and so forth. I had friends amongst the farmers. That is why, expert ako sa community development. Na, uh, in, in that sense. So you're into the arts also, sciences, agriculture, community development. You're into the arts, writing plays, collecting art pieces. It was a very interesting life. Na bobor ako do primero. Then they made me Department of English major. Sabi ko, how boring naman ito, you know, turo ko dal tayo. So I said. Basta every Friday, pag bimit tayo, tell me what new thing you introduced. Yun, nagre-report sila. Nag-invento na rin sila. Innovator. Oo. And then, I was sent to Iloilo. Oo. Then, I was sent to Baguio. Sa Baguio naman, ang community development. Ba, anong gagawin namin dito? Ano kayo? Why don't... You are imaginative, are you? Yes, ma'am. You are ganito? Yes, ma'am. And you can do many things. Yun. Kaya ang Baguio, nakaisip ako, mag-Baguio Arts Festival. That is where the Arts Festival started. Mga prize winners, tinitid na nila eh. Meron na ako kunyari. Basta yung mga tinitid na, bahala ka na mag-ano. May mag-ano, ma'am. Ay, mga 100, di ba? Oo. But it was not my intention to have my own. Talagang idododate ko yun. Kasi imagine yung ating creativity. We don't even know yung mga old masters natin. Yeah? And that only, that only in paint, that only visual. Pagdating ko sa Baguio, wow! May inspire ka talaga ng sulat, no? So the create ako ng ano? In offer ko ba? First, I invented the new writers' work, yah. At at daming at daming tulul na na mga writers. Kasi no no body was paying attention to the new writers, you know. So nagpakadag. Wala pang pero kag lecture. Walang mag-ano. You know, so in a sense, we were on our own. Oh, nobody was being sent to the state, yung mga gano'n. So, what I did, uh, I went to the, did the, the 
original din. Oh, oh. Bata pa. Student leader doon si Dodol. Oo. Oh, oh. So, pumunta ako kay Dil. Ah, tatay ang tawag ko doon eventually. Oh, tatay, magpakadang tayo ng ano. Yun daw, scholarship. Wala ba kayo gusto doon mga kung ano anong ginagawa natin? O sige, but it should be scholarly. So, uh, and include, not exclude. So, oo. Uh, so, ang guna ko yata ina no no eh, the sources of knowledge, parang big deal, ano? Oo. Uh, oo. Uh, uh. Then, ang guna ko mga speakers, yung mga deeds. Yun. Si Didi Menso, eh, galit na bang sulat, yun. Oh, and, and then afterwards, I read, naku, kailangan dito ba yung journal para ma-eternalize? Ma Hindi lang. Si, eh, yung mga ganyan, kailangan mabasa nila yun. So, I edited yung lectures nila. Uh, first, nag-invento ako ng lecture series. Para yung mga nag-aaral, nag-bebedyo ng science, malalaman nila, the science of knowledge, yung gano'n. Ano, yung, so, natututo sila about something that is not within their field. Ay nagustuhan naman nila na sila speakers. So, they wrote very, very good articles. And uh, I thought, I'm going to have this published. But then I was sent to Baguio. Pero dala-dala ko na yun. Na, yeah, para ma-inspire, uh, I brought up uh, experts to give a lecture. No? Yan sila dito. Tapos Concepcion, uh, yung mga on population. No? Yan. Then eventually sabi ko, huwag na labang yung single lecturer. I will have it as a, a dialogue amongst experts. We record the opinion. Then we would send this back to them. Yun ang isang sekreto dun. And dun araw eh, hindi ka baka pa-promote kung hindi ka in print. Di ba? So, pinaiedit ko sa kanila. And we came up. First, hindi ako original dun. Si Fel Santa Maria, ni Late Fel, who became then also chairman of the department. Eh, nirecommend ko siya na maging dean doon. Yan. But, uh, it being assigned to a new place is a, a great opportunity because that is where what you wanted to happen, you know, happens because you're the dean. So you exercise your authority for good, for the good, in yung iyong uh, temperament. You know. Kaya, pagka may takbuhan, they run from Iloilo to Biangao. Ayun, oo. May prices na ba yun? You know, you ask the girl, mga, mga ano naman, ang mga ilonggo, mga ah, mapagbigay. Hubingi ka sa kanya ng, uh, at saka ikalawa, eventually, yung mga nagiging officials, ay alam na yun natin. No? So, kung minsan, oh, oh mama, anong kailangan yan nyo? O ba yung iyong talino? Sabi ko, gano'n. Oh, ay, ano ba? What was I popular on at the time? Ma'am, hingi nang hingi kayo ng contribution. <laughs> ay, di. Institution <laughs> building. Di, ang, ang sabi ko, bakit akala niyo nyo nagbabago ako? <laughs> I have not changed. But, that is how we started the UPV Foundation. Mm. Uh, yung mga estudyante at money ang ano, ibigay nila sa foundation. It, it, it is now run and led by alumni. Uh, learn from the past. No? Apply to the present in, in the most uh, original way. Yeah and enjoy what you're doing. Kasi ako, may papang kasali ako niyan. Oh, nag-isang grupo. 
Pag-i-inspect ako ng the first time, di ba, order sa inyo yung military, and then lalakad ka. Kunyari, yung ginagawa rin ni Duterte ngayon. Sabi ko, nagawa ko na yun eh. <laughs> Tanong ko pa sana, what, what to tell you? Uh, 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 just be one of them. If you wa- expect them to lie down, you must know how to lie down. Gusto, gusto nila yun. Mag, uh, if you expect them to do, to stand at attention, regardless of the climate, do what they do. Kasi they will never... Uh, dismissed unless they are being dismissed. So, minsan, yung first other para sa akin, mamaya, umuulan, umuulan na. Umuulan na. Eh, nakatindig pa naman yung mga cadets. Makawawa naman, naiiwanan mo, nagpamasa na sila. Ano. Oh. So, I stayed with them until the last ride na basambasa sila. Ay, ako naman basambasa rin. Hindi ba nakakahiya yung tuyo-tuyo ka tapos nasambasa yung... One with them. Oh, oh. Uh, to me, everything was a lesson. Or I learned. I learned that you have to know how to get along with students. So, ang uh, una kong ginawa, uh, uh, huminga sila sa protest sa mayor. Huminga na rin ako. Yung Being plan. one with them. Na, nabilibid silang lahat eh. Because... Uh, they were rallying during an international event. In the event, they were in the hotel. Uh, uh, on leave, ako noon. I was a uh, consultant of bread. Pagdating ko sa bahay, ang dami palang telephone calls from the mayor. Yan. Ay sabi ko, mayor, on leave ako eh. Eh ano kung on leave ka, hindi ba ikaw si Dan Rola? Opo, ay pupunta po ako dyan. But you know, you cannot separate the, the deed because I was active you know, and myself. You know, ang gagawin ko kasi isa na hindi na para makapag-iipon. Ang mga graduates of such and such, pagkukontribute na yung taong ito sa foundation mm. ng pera na kasing laki ng kanilang income. Correct. Wow. Tuwa-tuwa ako na we were working together. Kasi, you never held anything against me. Kasi lesson din yun, ni ba? Thank you, Dan Rolla, Dr. Rolla, Chancellor Rolla, Mom Rolla, Emeritus Professor, Junisha A. Rolla, thank you. You are brave, you are brilliant, you are the best. And God bless you.